UFO UFO Shalom Kolayla Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Gonkadash All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders in Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So I want to talk briefly about this. Can't make this long. I'm dealing with dry voice tonight. So I'm going to get through this as best I can. <clears throat> as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So let's start here. In the book of Psalms 68. The book of Psalms chapter 68. Verse 16. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. So Mount Zion is going to be the exalted Government that's going to be lifted up and stand forever over the other hills or governments, the other nations. Let's go to verse 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. So, the chariot of Yahabashai, or the angel of the Lord before the camp, visited Moses in Sinai. <clears throat> Let's go here. The burning bush. Exodus 3 and 1. <clears throat> now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock of the backside, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Orab, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So that angel of the Lord is Yahawashai, whom the world ignorantly called Jesus. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Marsha. Let's go to Exodus 3 and 5. And he said, Draw nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon the Most High. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So when we study the scriptures, we know that America is that place that spiritually Sodom and Egypt, pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8. 
so we can apply the same playbook to modern times. This is re regeneration or reincarnation that is implied here. See, let's go to Exodus 3 and 8. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. So it's not by accident we're being oppressed by the other nations, which includes Ham. Hamite nations that we're reading about as well. Verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come up unto me. Exodus 3 and 9 again. Behold. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. So this is where we have to fast forward to Romans chapter 9. That Edom is also synonymous with Egypt or Pharaoh, the revised Roman Empire. So let's go briefly into Moses' mission. Now, Exodus 3 and 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my children, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So Moses would be used as a messenger, prophet. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. <clears throat> so Moses is being used as in Mount Sinai, and we're going to get that next. Let's go here to the book of Exodus 24. Exodus 24, verse 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode. Wait a minute, what is that cloud? That is the chariot of the Lord. Yahawashai, well, we read about it. We'll go back to it. <clears throat> we'll be patient. These so-called chariots were described by the prophets as clouds because they used advanced cloud cloaking technology, camouflage and concealment. See, Psalm 68 and 17. The chariots of God are 20,000 even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. As in Sinai. Well, we got to go here now. Let's go to Second Ezra 15, verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. This is Revelation 11 and 8. Spiritual Sodom in Egypt, America. Edom. Verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Smite Egypt with plagues as before. So that as is likened unto, compared to, or similar. See, let's go back to Sinai. We'll go here first. 
Numbers 11. <clears throat> I'm struggling. Numbers 10. Verse 12. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. See that? That's the chariot. So the same playbook is going to be used here in spiritual Sodom and Egypt, America. Let's read it again. These clouds are the so-called UFOs or the chariots of the Lord, angels led by Yahawashai. Numbers 10, verse 12 again. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. So uh, America, if it's outside of the motherland, which is Jerusalem, we're also in a spiritual wilderness or dry land because we're outside of the motherland, which is Jerusalem. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. See, let's jump down <clears throat> right here. Numbers 10, verse 34. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. So Yahawashai is going to arrive again and defend the Israelites, the children of Israel. Did we not read that in 2 Ezra 15 and 11? I will smite Egypt as before. So the chariots play a critical role in smiting Egypt with fire. They're going to do that here in the last days with fire. But the plagues start before that or leading up unto the final plague of judgment. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp and it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered and let them that hate thee flee before thee. The chariots can do this by raining down fire like they did in Sodom and Gomorrah. Matter of fact, let's get this. Um, let me see here. <coughs> I think it's Psalm 68. But we'll see. One moment. Yeah, let's go here. It's right here at 68. There's several places. Psalm 68 and 1. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. So the chariots can plague the enemies of Israel with rains of fire. See, Psalms 89 and 10. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thine strong arm. So that strong arm is Yahawashai. He is the right hand or the right arm of the Most High Father, Yahweh. Let's look up Rahab. Rahab. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 7294. 
Rahav. Rahav. You can't make this up. An epithet of Egypt. See? Arrogance and an epithet of Egypt. You can't make this up. That's beautiful. Go back here, 2 Ezra 15 and 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. See, so that mighty arm, Yahawashai, is going to reappear in a so-called UFO or chariot of the Lord. I know you see it. Let's go to Exodus 34. <clears throat> Exodus 34, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone, like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest, and be ready in the morning. And come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. Oh, we're going back to it. Psalm 68 and 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. So the Lord travels with an entourage. Whenever you see an entourage, it's like when you see the motorcade of the president of the United States or world leader. And Habershai travels with a host of angels or like a PSD for a commanding general or a international leader. It's a personal security detachment or personal security team, PST. So these are angels or chariots escorting him or among him. Exodus 31, Exodus 34 and 2. And be ready in the morning and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount and no man shall come up with thee neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount neither let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount and he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first and Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto the Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the tables of stone and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. See that? So Moses is a very key component here. And when you read Psalm 68 and 17, it also projects into the future. Spiritual Sodom in Egypt, like we read in 2 Ezra 15 and 11. So we have to be able to extrapolate based on Bible prophecy. Let's read that again. Exodus 34 and 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. So when you read him, read the interaction between Moses and Yahawashai, he'll say, I am the God of my fathers, the God of Abraham the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. 
Let's close out. Like one more. John 3 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So this is a very critical component to the prophetic word. So this is why 2nd Ezra says, I will smite Egypt as before. And when we read Psalms 68 and 17, that the chariots of the Lord as in Mount Sinai. So it's showing you that there's going to be a part two of our deliverance in like manner. So what is this Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness, exalting Yahweh Shai, which is that symbolic brass serpent, Yahweh Shai. Remember, he said, be wise as serpents. This wisdom that's being imparted unto us, like Yahweh Shai. Where's that at? See? Numbers 21 and 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loatheth this light bread. So these mockers and scoffers are back in the regeneration. Did not Peter say that? And in the last days, many scoffers shall appear. Yes. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So serpents can also be enemies of Israel. And in the last days, that serpent, pursuant to Psalms 58, are the Edomites primarily. But they have cohorts of the other nations in bed with them. Therefore, Numbers 21 and 7. So these armies of these other nations are going to come against Israel. This is why when we read Revelation 12, that the great dragon persecuted the woman, the remnant. You see that? The great dragon is this global enterprise under the international bankers, the Amalekites or Edom. Their militaries, their teeth, their armies. Wow. See? And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. That happened back then, but we're going to see instant replay in the last days as well. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass Every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in above. So Yahweh Shai is going to save a remnant that believe on him. This is where the eternal life is promised to when we read John 3.16. In the entire context is centered around as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. The historical accounts of the tribulation 
and deliverance of Israel. The entire context. So we get that life through Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> See, let's go to, it should be in this chapter. We'll stay in this chapter. Yep, let's go now. Well, I want to go to one of my favorites. Let's, let's close out here. John 5 and 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So what does this mean? Once again, the Most High uses the same playbook from the past because he, he's not about changing himself for us. He does not change. See, let's go here. Numbers, let me see. I think it's, one moment. Exodus. Exodus 23 and 22. Let's go to 20, Exodus 23 and 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee. That's Yahawashai. Remember, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So Yahawashai was replicated symbolically with the brass serpent being lifted up by Moses. Behold. I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So this is where we get life through. Yahawashai, that angel of the Lord. But if thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. So he's going to subdue the nations under us. See? Let's jump down to verse 27. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. Can't get around it. So the key to eternal life is through the angel of the Lord before us. Yahawashai. Got to get one more. John 14, verse 6. Yahawashai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, same thing spoken to Moses. That the Yahawashai must be lifted up. No, you see it. Just like the angel of the Lord that went before us and saved us and subdued the heathen and Gentile nations under us. And he comes with the hosts of heaven, angels, chariots, or the so-called UFOs in clusters that appear to be birds flying like we read about in Isaiah 31. Let's read it again. <clears throat> John 14 and 6. Yahawashai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we're going to see instant 
replay. What has been will be again, and there is no new thing under the sun. The Lord is going to defend the congregation of Israel as before, as in Mount Sinai. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem or Kankadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwame Yasharala in the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Or Barakatam. Shalom.